I'd like to demonstrate the difference between patch and submit form. In this first app, I have five screens. Screen one, the next screen all the way up to this last screen. Each screen has something consistent. It includes a text input field and a button that navigates to the next question. So the idea is for users of this app to answer a question uh, a little bit at a time so that it's not they're not overloaded. Each text input field is going to be bound to a column inside a data source. If I preview this app, I can put some information here, put some information here, Now the difference between the last screen and the, the previous four is that instead of a next button, there's a save button. This first way of saving is a more manual way of saving. I like this version for solutions where I, I need to perform a lot of calculations on each column in my data source patch. This means, uh, patch means save a new record to the data source. In column one, save the information that was in text input one. In column two, save whatever you had typed in on the second screen. In column three, save what you saved on the third screen. In column four, save what you had uh, written on the fourth screen. And in column five, save what you have in this field right here. If I wanted to save to an existing record inside the data source, I would have to change this. But for our purposes now, I'll keep it simple. Defaults and the, the name of the data source just means save it to a new row. This is all fine, but how could you create the same mechanism, but using a more familiar form control. So forms are useful in situations where you want to build a simple, uh, if you want to build in a simple form for SharePoint. So I've pulled up uh, another mechanism and I actually got this idea uh, from one of the Power App staffers. I think it was either Mackenzie or Audrey. Here is a form control you'll see that there's a data card visible. But if you look in the panel, there's actually five data cards. What I've done is I've only allowed one of these data cards to be shown at a time. Let's peek at the visible property of this first data card. Now, you could actually change, what I, what I, what I learned is you could actually change the visible property of a data card without having to unlock it. So here's data card one. The visible property says whenever gallery one, this gallery up here, whenever the selected uh, item is equal to one, this card's going to show up. You'll see here that I've color coded the button uh, such that when it is not selected, it's going to show this deeper blue color. When it is selected, it'll show this brighter color. I'll test it out. You'll see that the color changes. Gallery 1 was built using a table. In this case, my table is just made up of the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You'll see that printed inside the button here. I rounded the corners of this button, the radius, so that the top right radius is equal to the top left radius. And then I just changed the top left radius to be half of its overall height. So it looks more like a tab. Uh, let's go through each of the data cards. 
data card 2, you'll see that it's not visible right now. It is only visible when 2 was selected. Data card 3 is visible when 3 is selected. And so on up to data card 5, which only shows up when data card 5 is selected. Now, the save function that I put in this button is a lot simpler. All I have to do is type in submit form and the name of this form, form one. And it'll save to a new record. That's because I set the default mode of this form to new. Normally, it's edit. Uh, but if you set it to edit, you're able to, it's able to have an item property and you're able to update an existing record inside the data source. So you could try this out um, by creating a gallery. This is just a horizontal gallery with a button inside. That's all it is. Let me know which method you prefer, whether you prefer to patch it on multiple screens or whether you prefer submit form. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to see more Power Apps tutorials.